My name is Eri Mori from GK University, Tokyo, in Japan. Um, it is very, very great pleasure to be here speaking to you today. I will talk about uh, uh, the management of olfactory dysfunction pre, during, and after surgery in chronic rhinosinusitis. The main cause of olfactory dysfunction is from the sinusal disease, especially chronic rhinosinusitis. And this is a flowchart of the preoperative management for chronic rhinosinusitis. For the patient with no symptoms, we check the endoscopic and the CT findings and the blood test and the functional test, uh, including the smell test. Uh, for example, sniffing sticks or apsid. In Japan, we pursued the TNT or uh, intravenous olfactory test. When we diagnose the sinusitis or RZ, we treat the conservative treatment, uh, for example, nasal rinse, steroid, or low dose macroid for three months. After three months, if the patient uh, does not recover from the symptoms, we choose endoscopic sinus surgery. Endoscopic sinus surgery is really standard uh, procedure for the olfactory, uh, no, chronic sinus sinusitis. But the effect of surgery for olfactory dysfunction is quite different from the 23 to 86 percent. Don't you think this is quite different between us? The risk factor for severe olfactory dysfunction with chronic rhinosinusitis are polyps of olfactory cleft and the esmoid opacifications. In order to cure the olfactory dysfunction, it is very important to treat these functions in surgery. But how do we overcome these factors in surgery? For the esmoidal opacification, uh, we know isthmus surgery may cause a recurrence after the surgery. So it is very important to remove all the esmoidal laminas to avoid remaining esmoidal opacifications. And what for the surgical procedure for the olfactory cleft in chronic rhinosinusitis? But surgery in olfactory cleft in chronic rhinosinusitis had been taboo before for a long time because we didn't know about olfaction and there is uh, some risk of a complication like scalvase injury or iatrogenic olfactory dysfunction. But nowadays, we know more about olfaction after the, um, finding the olfactory uh, receptors uh, in 1991. And also nowadays, we can treat CSF leak, uh, but we don't want to uh, in case more better. So what do you think? Uh, is it time to start surgery for the olfactory cleft? In order to better recover from olfactory dysfunction, we need to overcome the lesion in the olfactory cleft. Uh, the, there is uh, some papers uh, from the American Journal of and uh, RZ. Uh, they are successful for the endoscopic sinus surgery of olfactory cleft. It is very important to remove the enough region in olfactory cleft with less injury of the olfactory epithelium and avoid the adhesions in olfactory cleft after the surgery. And also, it is very important to diagnose the lesion in the olfactory cleft because we sometimes uh, experience the olfactory neuroblastoma in olfactory cleft. And I want to show you uh, one of my patients. She is 70 years old woman with an, uh, asthma and comprising uh, the anosemia for more than 10 years. There were no reaction to all olfactory examinations. Uh, there are the olfactory examinations, but uh, it's only procedure uh, for Japanese people. So, uh, but there are no uh, reaction to the subjective and objective olfactory examinations. And I had tried the conservative treatment, but it was not reactive. So that's why we choose to have the surgery for this patient. Uh, you can see the uh, esmoidal opacification, and also there is uh, polyps in the olfactory cleft, and also there is uh, 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 information in the left maxillary sinus. Uh, this is a, a surgery video in the left nose after the esmoidectomy. 
first, I open the alpha click left gently by the micro debrita. You can see the polyposis in the alpha click left. And I use the micro debrita to remove the polyps laughly. And it is very important, the olfactic cleft will start from the attachment of the middle turbinate here. This is the entrance of the olfactic cleft. And please use micro debriter not to exposure the bone surface or not to remove the turbinate. And you can see the superior meters, and there is a polyps too. And please remove the polyps gently, not to injure the terminate mucosa, and remove the polyps in, the, in front of the natural ostium of the sphenoid sinus. To look the uh, line of the olfactory cleft, uh, sorry, it's, I think it's, Maybe stopped. Sorry for clicking. And to use the cotton to recognize the crevoriform plate and remove the remaining lesions by cutting forceps. And after that, inserting the gelatin uh, gel form with injecting the torium sinonon in the gel form. Uh, that one is uh, arginate calcium uh, named Sobsam. And this is after the surgery. Uh, the patient has recovered the smell uh, in four months after the surgery. And in the endoscopic findings, you can see the uh, olfactic left clearly, and you can see the major superior meters and the superior turbinate. And the histologi histological examination was Lear. The Lear is the respiratory epithelium adenomatoid hamartomas. The Lear is described as a pro prominent glandular proliferation lined by ciliated respiratory epithelium. Uh, this is a ground, and this is a cilia and that is uh, uh, rear in the pathological examinations. And I had experienced such uh, cases uh, like uh, rear and the purposes in olfactic left, and I had already done the, for the 60 patient like such a procedure, and it works 86.6%. So I think uh, to treat the uh, olfactic cleft region is also very useful and very effective to the olfactory dysfunction uh, with the clonic line of sinusitis. The point of this procedure is to handle the endoscope from the lower than esmoidectomy to look up the cleft. This is the uh, angle of the esmoidectomy, and this is the angle to the approach to the olfactic cleft. And also, I want to uh, emphasize uh, the necessary, the importance of the packing with topical steroid. Uh, only packing cannot avoid adhesion. And also, there are some papers to using absorbable steroid dressing reduce adhesion and oral steroid, and also systemic side effect. But it affects smell disorders. For the olfactory cleft and the middle meters, the position of the middle turbinate is very important. If the middle turbinate will move to the uh, medial, the olfactory cleft will close and the patient will get anosmia like this patient. But if the middle meters will close after the surgery, the drainage pathway will close and the sinusitis will occur an, again. So I think this is very important to pack the, uh, the correct position of the middle turbinate. 
And for the middle meters, we use the solvent uh, calcium agonate. And for the total meters, we use the silicon plate. And for the olfactic cleft, uh, we use uh, gel foam with steroid. Uh, gel foam is absorbable material, so you don't need to remove out. And also, the topical steroid can reduce the oral steroid. And this procedure is also useful to import the topical steroid even after the surgery. And this is the outpatient care after endoscopic sinus surgery. We need to keep periodic follow-up and nasal rinse. Uh, in case we combine with the topical steroid or antilocutorian or antihistamines. In case of the aggravate, we use the oral corticosteroid in some cases. But for recurrence of polyps in olfactory cleft, nasal drops are sometimes failure to maintain olfactory dysfunction. And the problem of internasal topical drop uh, steroid in patients with olfactory dysfunction is um, you may know this position of the head down and the backward position or praying to make a position. And this is uh, the problem because of the uncomfortable position and let poor compliance and also the failure to access to the olfactory epsilon. So I would like to uh, introduce uh, my uh, position for the uh, nasal drop. It's better to see the movie. I made a movie for the, this position. Uh, the name is Kaideki. Uh, this is just for the light nostril. Uh, let's look. The first patient should so lay down position. by side. So, turn to the right, uh, 20 and degree. Patient should okay. turn to the right, ten, 20 degree. And head up, 20 degree. Okay. And the chin and up, drop. 20 degree. And drip to right nostril to aim the nasal dorsum. This position enables the rickett uh, region of facti cleft by sliding the nasal septum. And this is the before and after the uh, kaiteki position. You can see the dye is going up to the olfactory cleft like this. The name of kaiteki means comfortable. Uh, because my boss, uh, Professor Dr. Thomas Fumel, uh, asked me, oh, what's the name of comfortable in Japanese? Uh, I just say, uh, it's kaiteki. So let's uh, name it kaiteki position. So that's why the name is kaiteki. Uh, this is an example of the recurrence of the smell loss uh, patient. He is complaining of smell loss uh, after the eight years after the surgery. And you can see the inflammation, small inflammation uh, between the olfactory cleft. And he doesn't affect it uh, for the head down and the backward nasal drop position. But when he changed the position by Kaiteki method, he gets better and he had recovered his smell just changing the position. So I think this position is also very useful if uh, you favor the nasal drop. This is kaiteki in Japanese. Uh, so this is a summary of my lecture. Uh, effectiveness of endoscopic sinus surgery for olfactory dysfunction in chronic line sinusitis is different between operators or disease. We must consider uh, the type of the chronic linocytis too. And it might be effective to remove the lesion in olfactory cleft for olfactory dysfunction in chronic linocytis. But there have been no established management of the lesion in olfactory cleft at this moment. So the goal of treatment of for olfactory cleft is diagnose the region and improve olfactory dysfunction. 
too much removal makes iatrogenic olfactory dysfunction too, so we must be careful not to exposure the bone. After the surgery, you can control uh, chronic rhinosinusitis with topical treatment. Head position is uh, very important to change the outcome of the affliction. Uh, thank you very much.